Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. This is part two of my series where I demonstrate the power that the Excel Solver add-in tool can give you to provide data analysis. In part one of the series I used Solver to produce a specific result. I wanted Solver to tell me how many units I have to sell in order to achieve a specific result of 56 percent gross profit return. So I set my goal for this cell is that I wanted the result over here to be a 56 percent gross profit. I wanted to allow Solver to change specific cells. In other words, tell me how many copies of each unit to sell in order to achieve a specific result. And I put two constraints. I didn't want to be selling phantom inventory. So the units left after I sold the uh, the, the units on this promotion had to be a positive number. It, it could be it could not be a negative number, it could not be less than zero. And I also wanted to make sure that the by changing cells for solver were also positive numbers. All right, so I recommend that when you work with Solver that you work with a copy of the original. So here with the worksheet test one is where I had Solver produce these results. On the data tab of the ribbon, I'm going to bring up the Solver properties or parameters dialog box. So my target cell, my goal was to have this cell over here. M15 produced a specific result. I wanted the result to be 56%, which is what you see over there. The variable cells that I wanted Solver to work on were to tell me how many units to sell. So this range over here, I5 through I14. The constraints, as I mentioned, I did not want to be selling phantom inventory. So I wanted to make sure that the items that I sold, I, were, I was selling a positive number. I also wanted to make sure that subtracting the uh, quantity, uh, the units sold from the quantity on hand was also a positive number. Now, as I look at the results, I start to scratch my chin and say, well, why did Solver say sell no copies of this and I have 125 copies of this? If you look over here on my inventory, I have more units on hand for product 8 than I have for any other unit. Well, remember my goal was to maximize the gross profit percent. And over here I have a really low gross profit percent. On the other hand, it carries a high selling price. So while it costs me a lot of money to purchase it, I also achieve a good amount of gross profit dollars when I sell it. So now I want to create a different scenario. And in this case, the target sell is I want to optimize my gross profit dollars rather than the gross profit percent. So once again, I want to make sure that I'm working on a copy of my original data. So up here in the header, I'm going to change this. I want to use Solver to optimize the gross profit dollars sold. All right, and again, I want to come down here and say optimize sales to achieve a specific GP dollar result. All right, the cells that I'm going to let Solver change remain in place. I want Solver to change these variable cells, which will feed into my ending result over here. I'm going to leave the constraints in place. The quantity available after I sell the product cannot be a negative number. And I also want to make sure that the units that I'm selling are also a positive number. Now, before I do that, I have to say, well, what's a realistic number to achieve for gross profit dollars? So this now is going to become my target cell. And just to highlight this throughout, I'm just going to apply some shading here. So this will become my target cell. But what I want to do is I want to come over here into my current inventory and I want to see, well, what is the potential? And I'll put over here potential 
for when I sell every copy, every unit on hand at this selling price. How many dollars is do I have a potential to sell? I want to make sure that if I sell every copy, what is my total of cost of goods sold by unit cost so that I can tell what my total gross profit is and my total gross profit percentage. So I'm going to use the sum product function. So equal sum product. Now to understand sum product, sum performs addition. Product performs multiplication. So sum product in one cell will add up the result of multiplying the quantity on hand by the selling price. So let's use control A to bring up the function arguments dialog box. We're talking about arrays. So it works on multiple cells. So my first array is going to be my quantity on hand, my current inventory. Now I'm going to be copying this formula over. So this array I want to make absolute. So if I use the F4, the function for keyboard shortcut, it applies dollar signs to freeze the columns, dollar signs to freeze the rows for this range. My second array that I want to addition and multiply some product to will be my selling price. So now click OK and let's apply some formatting to this. Let's use the uh, mini toolbar over here and apply currency with zero decimal places. So if I sell every copy that I have on hand, I have a potential to sell $126,180. Now remember that I applied absolute references to the quantity on hand. So when I copy some product over here, my cost of goods sold will be $68,000. When I copy this over with autofill, my potential gross profit is $58,038. Now I don't want to copy some product over here. In this case, I want to copy down the formula for gross profit percentage which is to say take your gross profit dollars and divide that by your revenue. So I'm going to copy this down. So I would have a 46% gross profit percentage if I sold every unit that I have on hand for the selling price. All right, now that I understand that, I realize I'm not going to sell every copy. So rather than having gross profit sales of uh, 17,000, I'm going to set a target in there for $25,000. So I'm going to put in here 25,000 as my goal. Now I still am going to be using this cell as my target cell. Alright, so open up the solver by going onto the data tab on the ribbon. Again, remember solver is an added program. If you don't see it, look at uh, part one of the series. So my target cell over here, I want to set to a specific value of 25,000. And by changing cells will be I want solver to tell me how many units to sell in this range of cells, the units to sell. The constraints that I'm going to use, I want to add in my first constraint. I want to make sure that the units that solver tells me to sell will be a positive number. So I want to say greater than or equal to zero. I want to add in a second constraint. I want to make sure that the inventory that I have left after Excel figures out how many copies to sell is also a positive number, greater than or equal to zero. And now click OK. So I'm ready to have Solver produce the result for me. Click Solve and there I have my result. Now I want to put in an answer report over here. So my result is $25,000 uh, which is what I said I wanted to set as my target. Notice over here that this product, product 8, it's telling me to sell 13 copies. I'll still have a considerable amount of inventory. So this again is going to guide you towards your decisions that you make as a business person. So I'm going to keep this as a result and produce a report. So click OK and now this is what Excel automatically changed with Solver to give me a specific result. I wanted to achieve gross profit dollar sales of $25,000 by changing these cells. 
subject to two conditions that the units that I sell must be a positive number the units that I have left in inventory must also be greater than or equal to zero I also established my goal of $25,000 by using the sum product function. So the sum product function is a great way it, with one function to create a result where you sum or add and multiply within an array. So the array that I wanted to uh, use was the quantity on hand, these cells, and I wanted to match the number of cells in the second array the selling price I wanted to match the units on hand again remember that I made that an absolute cell reference by the unit cost I wanted to use some product to multiply and add the fixed range of the quantity on hand my inventory by my gross profit per unit I did not use some product over here instead I copied down this formula to achieve gross profit percentage it's taking gross profit dollars divided by revenue so there's an example of how you can use the analysis tools within Excel solver is an add-in it's a fantastic program it requires that number one you write out a goal and the goal has to be a single cell which contains a formula which cells the by changing cells you want solver to change automatically for you and how many constraints do you want to establish and this is typical of the tips that I offer in my series of DVD ROMs the 50 best tips for Excel 2007 and I will look for you in the next lesson